a good ner of Yamtiv. When someone wishes you Ad Mea Vesrim, Biz a hundred and Svansik, may you live to a hundred and twenty. What do you answer? Do you say Amen, same to you? Or Hamavarech Nizbarech, may the one who blesses be similarly blessed. Rabbi Lamb was the longtime head of Yeshiva University, and he collected some of his Yizker talks in a slim volume. He writes about a worrying trend that he noticed in recent years that people started responding to the blessing of 120 with, oh, no, thanks. I hope it won't be that long. He says this is problematic, and it shows some concerns that we have to be mindful about and talk about. Of course, no one wants, chas v'shalom, an old age where we're lonely or a burden on others, especially loved ones. There's at least one story in the Gemara where the chachamim daven for a speedy and painless passing for a colleague who suffers from pain or dementia or something like that. And yet, life remains a supremely precious and sacred value. So rather than say no thanks to the bracha of 120, we should pray that it be pleasant, independent, dignified, and honorable. Rabbi Lam remarks on three concerns that bring anxiety, bring about anxiety in connection with long life, which are advances in technology, medical technology, in the way our world views advanced age, and the overall devaluation of life in our culture. As for the advances in medicine, he says we have to recognize that life has always been precarious, perhaps even more so in the past than we experience it. Between pogroms and pandemics and the inability to shelter themselves from either, our ancestors faced a fragility of existence probably greater than we'll ever know. Yet we hear and see others' stories nowadays of a long twilight zone between life and death, and we fear that, maybe rightfully so. It's not that we aren't allowed to have our anxieties, but our faith, our trust should always float above that. The trust that God has been good to us, God is good to us, and God will be good to us. The second problem is that as we age, our world increasingly makes us feel irrelevant. If you can't keep up with, te the, the, with the technology, what good are you? This Rabbi Lamb calls a profound theological and existential error. We put so much effort and energy and hope into training for a career. And that when that career ends, what do you have left? He writes that he tells 12 and 13 year olds at their bar and bat mitzvah to start planning now for retirement, which means to develop facets of your life that don't have to do with earning money, like learning, like being part of a community, like establishing and maintaining relationships and friendships with other people and with God. He says to recall this especially at Pesach, because a slave is someone defined only by their capacity for work. Free people, by contrast, retain their humanity in their own eyes, as well as in the view of others, far after concluding the chapter in their lives that produces valued labor. Third is the overall devaluation of life in our society. You can attribute this to medical assistance in dying, as it's far too gently called, the reductionist value of life solely by economics, and the fact that people are afraid to have more children because of tuition costs or housing costs or food costs, all legitimate problems that have to be addressed. But let us not allow the mistakes and miscalculations of the society around us affect our knowledge and faith and dedication to life in all its beauty and all its balance of suffering and joy. An Ivri is someone who stands on the other side. And on this issue, we are clearly on the other side of a worldview that values life only in dollars and cents and diminishing returns. We know that we all become more valuable with age, not less. So Yizker, which we say on the eighth day of Pesach, should both give us a moment of reflection on the lives of those who came before us, and of course, link those reflections to the world-changing mitzvah of tzedakah. And it's also a moment for us to allow the light of those thoughts to reflect on our own lives. Today is a new day, and we're here, which gives us renewed strength, renewed faith, and a new moment in which to live, to truly live. 
Once upon a time, a Hasidic Rebbe blessed one of his followers with long years, to which the Chassid replied, Amen, but may they not be peasant years. We can say Amen to that. May our days and our years not be peasant years, simply awaiting the end, but rather days and years of Chaim Amitim, real life, true life, full life, connected to friends, family, and community, and to God, the source of our life and everything in it. And may we all enjoy all of its blessings in good health as long as we are able. A good yamtiv.